in Kentucky anymore. Kansas. <laughs> Kansas? Really? Who gives a shit? People from Kansas? Welcome to the Pixel Pop Movie Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Toby. Uh, this fortnight, I'm joined with the uh, super delectable, extra tasty Ethan. Oh, hello. And welcoming back the much-loved and much-missed Lucas. What's up? Dude, that, that quote is probably my second favorite quote of that entire movie. <laughs> we lured him back with Cloverfield. <laughs> uh, you had to. Like, this is, like, for those that may have listened to an episode or two, I'm kind of a fan. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> we have got an enormous truckload of news for you this fortnight, um, thanks uh, partly to the Super Bowl. Uh, there was a lot of trailers dropped, there's just a lot of activity and news. So uh, without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. Take us away, Ethan. Uh, first we got here, we finally got a trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp. Thanks Boy! To, just before the Super Bowl we got it. Yep. Boy! Oh shit! That looks so good. I texted yeah. Ethan after the trailer came out, and I'm like, holy shit, did you see the Ghost Rider cameo? And he's like, no, and he starts like going crazy through the trailer, and yeah. then it was the photo, I just took a screenshot of Ghost on the bike. Right. Uh, you know, because it's funny, it's a joke. Ethan and Toby have to laugh now, because I'm uh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited. They actually look like they're going to be putting Lawrence Fishburne into a villain role, which... I don't think he was. Memory... Nah, that's the vibe I got off the trailer. Like, but to be, he was a, he yeah. was a villain of sorts in um, Predators as well. That's yeah, not what that's I, true. That's not what I mean. What I mean is the he character wasn't a particularly he... nice guy in John Wick either. Yeah, nah, not really. But what I what I mean is he's playing Bill Foster, or Bill Foster, or something. I can't who's remember. Giant what I mean. Man. Who's Giant Man? Who's a good guy? So it looks like they're putting making Giant Man into a bad guy. Like that's just kind of the vibes I got off the trailer. And, like, I'm not sure if this is a spoiler or not, but I've kind of got a feeling already that he's going to be the dad of Ghost. Like, Probably, yeah. That feels like that's a f fucking huge, obvious thing that I kind of hope doesn't happen. He probably realized it was time to jump ship from DC and just come to Marvel. That's where it's at. Well, even when he was promoting Justice League, he said he was a Marvel fanboy. Yeah. So, so I think that, <laughs> you know, too, they've got to be really careful with these, these trailers uh, for this and Marvel because they happen after Infinity War, it would be so easy to spoil that movie with what? just the wrong clip, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's true. Well, I think the advantage with those two movies, though, is that Ant-Man and the Wasp don't really have anything to do with Avengers 3, and Captain Marvel is a 90s movie. Like, it's a yeah, flashback, fill-in-the-gaps movie, so they can kind of get away with it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's got to be careful what they... Yeah, you well, don't want to yeah, have, yeah. have, like, um, Ant-Man going, whew, just as well we don't have all those Infinity Stones or something. You know what I mean? Like, it would just, you got to be, you don't want to drop that in a trailer. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure also, Marvel I'm also, has it under control. I'm also gathering from the information that we have available that it's possible that Ant-Man and the Wasp takes place before Infinity War. Like, i got a feeling it's, it's kind of cut in between Civil War and... It and could be, War. really, yeah. Yeah, like, that's just, again, that's just that kind of a vibe I got off the trailer. Because it's like, we're going to have this fucking world-shattering event, you know, universe-shattering event in Infinity War, and they're like, nah, let's do another high stay. Like, you know, it just, it seems really kind of out of the, you know, perhaps, out of... Perhaps, well, perhaps they're in the nano-universe when uh, Infinity War's taking place. Because you'd have no concept of time and, and all that while you're in well, there. Well, it could be, that's, yeah. That's also true. That is also very true. They could go into there right before the Infinity War starts. Yeah, so they come out of Civil War, you have some, some storyline, and they're like, hey, we're going to go diving in and rescue the original Wasp. And while they're in there, the Infinity War takes place. And then they come out and they're like, what the fuck? And then Avengers. It, it could be how it ends, actually. How much it could end, or the press credits could be them coming out and realizing oh shit, this is going on right now, and that's why the two of them are in Avengers 4. How, how much did we change? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's keep moving. Lots to get through. Uh, we got a, a Dundee trailer, which turns out to not actually be an actual movie, like we all thought it was. Yep. Although I think Hemsworth and a couple of others have said, look, if you're genuinely serious about this, I could be interested. Yeah. I think they did say it. Yeah, that was, that was some really good casting. Like They had a lot of people in that. Yeah, Pretty Hugh much Jack every major Aussie person. Hugh Jackman yeah. was the Prime Minister, and Margot Robbie was in the bar, and yeah, even even cool. Dundee was in like the original Dundee was in the the actual full um, Paul Hogan. trailer that dropped on Super Bowl Day. Yeah, yeah, that was mm. good. Hopefully it works. I mean, it's it's there to lure uh, our American friends out to to visit, so hopefully it works. 
but cool trailers. If you haven't seen them, we'll have them in the links uh, in the in the below. So check them out. They're really funny. All right, now we got a Netflix movie called The Rain. Yeah, I haven't actually seen the trailer for this at all. This is this is kind of cool. Like it, it's sort of like it is another. I think it's it's from the Netherlands or something like that. It's another European yeah. series. Like after the success of Dark. Um, and it, it definitely was well received globally. It's great to see that now that Netflix has got this network that's sort of spanning the globe, not only are they outputting globally, but they're starting to input globally. And um, if you haven't watched Dark yet, absolutely you should. Um, mind you, do it in German with subtitles. Don't do not do the voice dub, it's terrible. But I'm really <laughs> looking forward to Catching Rain as well, and it's good to see. I want to see more of this stuff like coming out of... Um, not just Europe, but you know Asia and other places, because they just they don't follow this typical Hollywood beat for beat sort of script, and it's nice to sort of have something a little bit off the wall and different, makes you think a little bit differently. So, not that I'm saying American stuff is dumbed down at all, it's just that it, it they Hollywood in particular tends to follow a routine, you know, and you don't necessarily get that routine, um, you know, out of European stuff, for instance. So, yeah, I'm super keen for it. Kid- there was a new one that dropped last night called The Ritual as well. Another horror yeah. one that Netflix put out. Yep. Yeah, so apparently, I think that one got slammed, but I, I really want to see oh, it. Look, it. Yeah, it looks interesting. I think um, Andy Serkis is a producer on that one. I'm not sure. But it, going back to Rain, so I haven't actually seen anything about this. What's the like the TLDR on it? Like, what's the what's the storyline? Like, what did you get from the trailer? Well, I tell you what, we'll pause here and we'll go watch the trailer. Alright, so we just we had to refresh ourselves and we've just watched the trailer again for the rain. Um, Dude, that, the sure rain looks dropping. nuts. Uh, it actually said, if for it those said of you spring, read, so that'll um, probably. Have you ever read? There's a Richard Layman story. Uh, he's he's the guy that did some of that really perverted horror stuff. He did um, uh, a novel called The Rain or something like that, and. I just wonder if they drew any inspiration from that because in that what happens is is there's a rain and it's got like some sort of toxic thing that it picks up right Uh, what happens is when it rains on you it turns you into like this psychopathic killer and so it it drops on this country town and everyone just goes nuts it's not a movie it's a TV show 8 episodes yeah yeah Scandinavian thriller yeah it's Danish yeah after a brutal virus wipes out the population Two young siblings embark on a perilous search for safety. A Scandinavian thriller series, so says the Netflix YouTube channel. <laughs> but hey, yeah, it looks pretty good. So, I mean, don't know quite when that's dropping, but it's another one to put on your, your watch list. As I said, it's good to see some of this stuff uh, coming from other places around the world. Yeah. All right, what's next on the list? Next, we've got uh, Detective Pikachu started filming. Yes. So we're all excited for that. There was some casting in that I heard too. What was the? There was some recent that Bill casting. Nighy, That's right. Yeah, Bill else. Nighy. Yeah, I like Bill Nighy. <laughs> what? 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 I did. I not heard that. That's fucking hilarious, though. Yeah. Dude, yeah, he's he's he's, else he's great in everything. For the most so part. You yeah. got Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu, Justice Smith, Catherine Newton, Bill Nighy, uh, Ken Watanabe, Suki Waterhouse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. We finally got a trailer for Mute, which is dropping on the 23rd of this month. Yes, that looked good too. About so that's the time. sequel to... Kind of sequel. Yeah, side sequel to Moon. Yeah, to Moon. Yeah, so he's a bartender. Yeah, it does look really mute. good. Yeah, it does look good. Looking forward um, to it. Do, do, we know, do we know what date that's dropping? Yeah, 23rd of February. All right, cool. So we got two weeks. Two away. weeks. Two weeks. Nice. Excellent. Uh, next one we got here is that the X Men and, and Marvel Universe crossover may not happen for years. Yeah, really? that doesn't surprise me, to be honest. Yeah, didn't Miss- Fee got quoted as like? Oh no, he didn't get directly quoted, but I think they said something about after Phase Four. Yeah. Well, to be what? fair, I mean, I'm sure like, I am absolutely 100 percent certain Marvel have everything meticulously planned for the next X years. Ba-dum-tsh. Oh yeah, they do. And. Uh, Oh, yeah, it just yeah. that that just wouldn't fit in. It would just it would take because the thing is they're not just planning a movie and scripting it. They're planning a whole series of movies and how they all tie together. Yeah. So it would just and it's still gonna take a couple. Sorry, you carry on. No, you're right. I just think it would upset that whole plan. So it's a case of well, rather than trying to thread it into what we've got already, um, we'll bolt it on at the end. I would wouldn't be surprised if you get a small cameo or two, like because they don't really change the whole weave of the, the story, but I don't think you're going to get some really, a full solid movie until, yeah, later. Because it's going to take sense. a couple of years for them to actually like, get the rights and do everything like, for the whole yeah, deal exactly. to get through as well. 
Yeah, I feel like I was saying to Ethan, I think it was like last night or the night before, wouldn't surprise me if at the end of like Avengers 4 we got a Fantastic Four tease um, because they said Phase 4 is going to be set primarily within uh, the, like the cosmic section of the MCU. Yeah, which is a great time to put Fantastic Four in. Yeah, I mean, their, their whole origin is cosmic. So I mean, yeah. having them at the forefront, but then also having, you know, the, the wind down from Guardians, getting into possibly maybe another Thor movie out of space, um, having Captain Marvel, you know, you've, we've got all these, you know, even Can doing you like a... Guardians and, and Fantastic Four team up and you've got Drax and The Thing. That uh, would be amazing. That would be amazing. Like just banging would be great. Right each other. And then throw an ape <laughs> Venom in there as well. When you, when you go to play the symbiotes and you just got Ethan a happy man. <laughs> Provided also that Drax survives Infinity War. Uh, yeah, I, he's, I, I he's, would say this is that the thing. James Gunn wouldn't let the Guardians die outside of their own I, film. No, I, I think this. Yeah, I that know. is that. I also think this is part of the humor, though, is that Drax is so gung ho to get killed almost. I think the part of the joke is he's going to be one of the last ones standing. Like it's oh, a probably. sick, it's a sick joke, but he's the first one be... in, and I think he's well, the like, one you, that you, will, you, you know, stick around the longest. You can imagine one of the other ones dying before him, and he's like, "How dare you die before me? I'm supposed yeah, to die." Yeah, here. exactly. He would yeah, get he angry. Would, he would get so mad that like he's he wasn't able to have an honorable death to save his friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So uh, yeah, I, I can see him sticking around for a while. All right. Next, we've got uh, Sony Entertainment now has a new uh, chairman, and apparently they're not too keen on keeping Sony Entertainment. They want Sony to be a pretty much purely tech company. So the rumor yeah. going around is that Sony and all their movie and TV assets could be going up for sale at some point. Yeah. Now, there's, before we jump the gun, I don't think there's any legal way in hell that Disney could buy it. No. It'll be to not, the number no, number no chance in hell. No, because at the, the, that stage, the... Um, you know, the, there's there's you know legal things get involved, and they would own too much of a monopoly, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Because yeah. what um, that'd that'd leave Warner Brothers, which owns Paramount, yeah, New Line, um, yeah, Universal, you know, Legendary. Yeah, I don't think there's anybody else big enough to what or what might happen is the Vultures will come in and pick at the bones, in which case you Disney might be able to pick up, say, the Spider Man, the Marvel rights, stuff, yeah, yeah, and leave the rest. We'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, I, I don't think they would be able to buy legally buy the company outright. No, 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 no chance. So, uh, anyway, but interesting. And, and yeah. I know Sony's been in up and down for a little while now, and, and I was sort of following their news because of their PlayStation consoles and all that sort of stuff, and I know they were just sort of following the financial stuff there. And I know they've been on a bit, bit of a rocky path for a little while now, so this is not too surprising. Uh, the other thing is, it's interesting to note how a lot of these big guys are getting out of the movie business and I wonder if that's because of home streaming and you know their analysts looking into the future going you know what in 10 years time there's not going to be this you know this there's not going to be cinemas aren't going to be the same all this sort of stuff like I wonder if it could be that yeah I I mean I I haven't sat down and thought about it yet and I certainly haven't but I, I mean there's obviously these companies have people that get paid a lot of money to predict the future and I just wonder if it just seems odd that you've got Fox that went nope we're just unloading everything that isn't sport and now you've got Sony looking to dump their movies why is everyone dumping movies well you know, again, may, maybe maybe they've predicted, uh, you know, the, the fall of cinemas. Well, then, then maybe that's what Disney's doing. They think, like, ah, oh, it's all going to go to home streaming. Why don't we start up our own streaming service and buy mm-hmm. out? Things? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, <clears throat> may, maybe we'll get killed by assassins later tonight because we know too much. Because <laughs> oh, yeah, just like Warner Brothers and uh, DC, we know they listen to our podcast. They do. They yeah, of do. course. They, they, they data mine us. They data mine us. And I'm sorry, DC, but we've got no... You're not being talked about tonight, so you can just piss off and listen to this one, all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, next bit of news, please, Ethan. Uh, we're finally getting... Well, this was announced a while back, I think, but a Sleeping Dogs movie with Donnie Yen. Is it confirmed or is sure, it just speculative uh, at this yep. stage? It's confirmed. I'm pretty sure okay. Luke is pretty excited about I mean, about it. I'm always happy yeah. for some Donnie Yen. I mean, I didn't play Sleeping Dogs, but you know that and Ip Man 4, please, it's on its way. Uh, Donnie Yen actually confirmed it on his own Instagram that it was happening. Yeah, this is excellent. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anything that gets Donnie Yen doing martial arts again, I'm happy with. If yeah, I'm love honest. his work. Love his work. Hell yeah. I think we got one here that I think Toby's happy about, but Amazon is working on the new Conan the Barbarian TV show. Yeah, this is interesting. I mean, 
after, I mean, everybody knows that Game of Thrones is wrapping up next year, and, and so all these streaming services are frantically running around looking to snap up anything fantasy related to fill the gap. You know, obviously HBO has got like half a dozen Game of Thrones spin-offs, but whether they take or not, people might be fatigued with Game of Thrones by that stage. So you've got Amazon doing Lord of the Rings, which, you know, is either going to be a hit or a miss. I don't think there's going to be any middle ground with that. Um, and now you've got them looking to pick up uh, Conan the Barbarian. I mean, as a fan of the, the, the original movies, as a fan of the comic books, as a fan of the original Howard stories, I'm keen. Uh, there was a German, I think, TV series years ago. It was terrible. I own it on DVD. I've never watched it. It's that bad. Um, <laughs> so hopefully with a bigger budget. I mean, who do you cast? That is always the biggest thing with Conan. It's it's the casting. Because it's it's... It's not like one of those roles that could be, you know, any gender and any ethnicity and any size. Like, it's very, very specific, you know, and people are looking for a very... You, you know, even when Momo was cast, a lot of people were like... Ugh. I think the you perfect know. person to cast is no one to just let Conan die. Oh, uh, look, he's a great... I mean, if you've read the books, <laughs> it's a great... I mean, they've been around for 100 years. It's a yeah. great series of stories. Um, the trouble is, the movies that you've seen don't follow any of those stories. Uh, the, the character is, even the Momoa recent movie, like, it's got nothing to do with those stories. Oh, I've only seen the Momoa movie. Right, well, there you go. Um, <laughs> but I mean, if they want to do a series, then you could probably start telling some of the, uh, you know, proper stories. Uh, like Frost Giant's Daughter and all that sort of stuff. That would be kind of cool. But, um... Yeah, look, as long as it doesn't get too campy, American kind of Buffy the Vampire Slayer kind of Joss Whedon-y. If they go down that route, you've lost me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably that's, will. that's what it needs to stay away from. It needs to stay away from having those kind of American tropes. Campy, yeah. In, yeah, exactly. yeah in, 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 its, in its fantasy work. Um, which is why Game of Thrones works. I mean, sure, it's it's backed by HBO, which is predominantly an American company, but I mean, it's filmed in Europe largely. But it doesn't follow those campy tropes. Um, and it's done extre extremely well. I think this is the thing. If they're going to do a Conan TV show, if they stick to the books, they'll be safe. If they start making up their own shit, then there's that danger of, of heading into, you know, Camp Town. And, yeah. Anyway, cool. 100% agree. Yeah. Uh, the Game of Thrones creators are being tapped to do a new Star Wars saga, to write and direct a new Star uh, Yes, new and there's saga. speculation that it could be um, Old Republic. Right, not to the Old, to the Old Republic. Republic. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, yep. there was further sort of hints put out that it had nothing to do with the current sort of saga, you know, 1 through 12. Nope, and nothing to do with uh, Ryan, John Ryan Johnson's. Ryan Johnson either. Yeah. yeah, so that doesn't leave a lot of... It's either the other side of the universe, what's the point, or it's, yeah, early days or late days. And I don't think you want to do late days because then you've got the whole, well, we need to feed the current shit into that. So, yeah, you're better off doing... And a lot of people have been asking for it too, so... That'd be cool. But I mean, isn't also on top of that, Disney's also got like multiple shows lined up for their streaming service, like multiple Star Wars shows. Oh, it sounds multiple Marvel ones as well, I've heard. Yeah, like I, Disney are really just putting them in a position where they're going to be a day one, you know, if they can keep their, their, their monthly fee under 10 US, they're going to make a lot of money. I I think they plan on having it cheaper than Netflix as well. To, to that would be Netflix. smart. Yeah, if you can come in and say like seven dollars US a month, they they are just gonna. It's just an instant oh, hookup yeah. for everybody. Instant hookup for everybody. All right. Next, we got the Jessica Jones season two trailer, which is yeah. dropping the the TV show is dropping March eighth. Yeah, so not too far to away. No, not too yeah, far. Just over a month. Four weeks away. Four weeks away. Yeah. Yep. The biggest really the good. biggest thing I took away from that trailer was when the kid. No, named Captain America and says, you know, do you know Captain America? And I'm like, wow, jawline just hit the floor. And it's such a throwaway line, you think nothing of it. But when you consider how much direct reference the the, the Netflix universe has had to the MCU, it's like they never reference anyone by name. It's, you know, the, the big no. green guy and the guy with the hammer and the incident. Like, it's 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 really... Uh, so for it to be... Talked around. Yeah, and for, it to, for them to actually say the name... Um, and there was also a lengthy article in Screen Rant recently where they were talking about possible connections between it and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You know, shared storylines and shared characters and stuff like this. That would be really interesting if, if, if proven true, and this is the cool thing, we sort of get uh, Jessica Jones 2. And if there is a bunch of MCU names and links, then my hypermeter for... Uh, Netflix characters appearing in Avengers 3 is going to go up. 
because Ooh, if yeah. they're going to start directly referencing stuff and bringing stuff together and closing gaps and bridging shit, then then you know considering that for the longest of time there's no there was no avengers tower and and everything was sort of separate for them to all of a sudden turn around and start doing this is 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 teasingly interesting well jessica jones is the only one that's going to be up before infinity war correct yes all the others will be out i think i'm pretty sure we're even getting daredevil season three before we get iron fist season two because that hasn't even started <clears throat> filming yet but daredevil has yeah, so Daredevil. I think we get all three. I think we get Jessica so, Jones, Luke Cage, and Daredevil this year. Yeah. So the way that they're dropping it is uh, Jessica Jones is going to be in the first third. Uh, Luke Cage is going to be in the second third. Daredevil is going to be in the third third. Uh, and then Iron Fist is currently filming now, which is going to be the first third of next year. Uh, and then, and then, will and, be after and then that. Punisher Two will be in the second third of next year. I'm pretty sure I saw Misty in that trailer too. Did you? She 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 seems to be throwing Jessica to the ground and covering her from an explosion or something. Is that Misty? You reckon? It looked like her to me, but I could be off the mark. You didn't see her face. I'm not sure, but I know that Misty's going to be in Iron Fist. Yeah, and Iron Fist is going to be in Luke Cage. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah it looks like they're going to do Heroes for Hire, which is yes, awesome. Pretty much. Yeah. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see see um who's who's going to be um appearing in jessica jones too yeah i think the 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 link was um the reference to the drugs that jessica is given um ihf or whatever it is um and the fact the same one for colson yes the fact that she's just died and brought back um there was this theory that it was connect- same same mob that did Coulson, yeah. The mob that did Coulson was directly led by Nick Fury, that that's the thing. Yeah. I know, yep. I know. But that's the thing. If, if, look, it, I mean, it was a lengthy article and it was speculative, but if that turns out to be true, if she's gone through the same um, agency that Coulson has gone through, if we're name-dropping Captain America, if, 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 all that shit happens, as I said, my oh. hypermeter for... for um, you know, bringing it all together because I mean, Agents of Shield's been dropping mad, mad Avengers like connections and links in the last season. This you is know. one of those. So the name of the company that you know gave Jessica her powers was IGH. Yeah, which is Inhumans yeah. Growth, growth, growth yeah, Hormone, Hormone, Hormone. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, Hormone. Because they refer because in MCU they refer to them as Inhumans and not whatever the mutants or whatever it is. It's like yeah, yeah. So does that, does that mean they're going to make Jessica Jones into an Inhuman rather than... Well, apparently in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, they showed that it's possible to steal the powers of Inhumans through surgery. So they're thinking yeah, that could be what happened with Jessica Jones. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of fucking lame. Mm. Well, we'll we don't know. It's, it's, just, speculative. Yeah. it's speculative. Like, I, I get that it's speculative, but if that's the case, man, that's kind of lame. Like... I can't said, you I'm a, just. I'm more pa- excited for the. Can't you get a powers connection. from some like radioactive waste or? <laughs> well, we know, can't all be Daredevil. Experiments in a prison, like we can't you know, all that, be that's Deadpool. The, none of that's none of that's ever been done before. <laughs> Why is it got to be fucking Inhumans, man? Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I've watched the first three episodes of Inhumans. Like, I'm slow burning my way through it, begrudgingly, and it's actually not terrible. It's not as bad as everyone's saying it is, but it is definitely very cheesy. But like. If they want to get away from the inhuman stuff and kind of be like, all right, cool, we're going to brush that under the rug. Just pretend that didn't happen. Like, then why go back to the inhumans? Like, it's just dumb. It's a well they don't. It's a well they don't need to go to. I mean, it's it, to me, it wouldn't seem worth it because the inhumans just bomb like shit. Yeah, and now they're going to be like going away from inhumans altogether. Like that's yeah. you know the, the, they tried the experiment. The experiment failed. Let's move on. Let's try something else. So going back and then having the inhumans, the inhuman growth hormone, be part of her. If this again, if this is the case, this is all speculative. But yeah. if that's what they're going to do, then they're kind of tying the inhumans into the Netflix universe, which then, you know, like no one's going to care about. No, yeah, no one's going to give two shits about. Yeah. Yeah. Have to wait and see. You only got a month. You'll have to wait and see. Yeah, that's true. All right. Hey, Next, we've got. Uh, an old friend of Charlie Sheen has accused him of murder. And nobody batted an eyelid ever. <laughs> In that, we're not surprised. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, his old friend, if you look at the picture, his old friend looks like he's high on coke. Uh, yeah, Charlie always is. looks like he's high on coke. How the fuck these guys remember what happened last week, let alone years ago, is, <laughs> it just amazes what's, me. What's funny is the guy that's accused him is a former Major League Baseball player. 
So yeah. he he used who to just play... got out of jail. <laughs> yeah, he used to play for the Mets, who just got out of jail, is accusing Charlie Sheen of murdering uh, one of his PAs or something yeah. like that. And like yeah. the whole story, like I, I came across it the other day. I'm reading through it and I'm like, what the fuck is this? This is like some, you know, like if they had a like. I think Sheen's in enough trouble as he is it is because he, he can get done for manslaughter if he's not careful because he was having sex with women and not telling me he had AIDS and all that sort of stuff. Like, you can yeah. get, you can you can get charged for that. So, the man's the man's in trouble as it is. But um, you know, as yeah, again, to kind of have this have this kind of <laughs> sorry, on Charlie, top but is I mean, if, you, if it's found out to be true, I really don't think anybody's going to be greatly surprised. No, <laughs> absolutely not. All right, here's some DC news. You said there was no DC news. We've got DC news up next, Ethan. No, I wanted to avoid this so DC doesn't get a shout-out this time. Well, we have to, so go on. Here you go, DC. I know you're listening. <laughs> uh, the report is Yaw Queen Phoenix is in talks to play the Joker. For, For some, some reason. reason. <laughs> <laughs> and the Martin Scorsese movie about his origins, he's apparently up for the role. Although he has <laughs> outspoken, I'm pretty sure, about how superhero movies and all that sort of stuff is shit. I'm pretty sure you see it at one point. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is how much money did you offer him, DC? Tell us in the comments. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing is super interesting because, like, yeah, he's been super critical of superhero movies and how they're a cash grab. There's no artistic integrity in them. But exactly, Mar- cash grab. That's all he wants. Yeah, but then Martin Scorsese attaches himself to a Joker movie and he's like, I have to do it. Like, well, maybe, what may, the look, fuck? Like, maybe, I mean, let's be honest, the, the Joker is an interesting character. Maybe he's going to turn it into a more of an art house piece and show us how it's all done. You know, maybe it's not going to be a superhero movie. I mean, sure, it's got the Joker, but you could strip down a lot of those elements and turn it into more of a drama or a thriller if you wanted to, especially as an origin story. Well, they could totally do the killing joke. Um, yeah. Like, the, take the prequel, I'll uh, take the, um, the pre-Joker stuff out of the Killing Joke and make that into a huge feature. Mm. Like, that can easily be done. We essentially do get a Joker movie. We see how he becomes the Joker. As far as I am aware, that is also officially recognized in canon as his origin story. It is, yeah. So technically, we'd be getting the origin story. It's a crime story. Martin Scorsese is literally built for doing movies like this. The pieces kind of line up. I'm just, I don't like the casting at all. It's extremely early days. I mean, we're just talking rumors here. So, if there is mm. going to be anything, it's you know two, three years at best. Come right, on, DC. Under more interesting what things. What do you have to? Uh, yeah, Strange Things season three sets episode count and filming start date. They are going back to eight episodes this season. Now, if everyone realized that one episode in season two is utter shit, we don't need nine anymore. <laughs> you mean the Star Wars ripoff? <laughs> <laughs> this Fuck. is fine. This is fine. Yeah, looking forward to yeah. it. Yeah. And as well, there's also time jumping to keep up with the um, ages. Age, of, age of the cast, yeah. 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 Yep. So yep. I'd say I'd say they'd maybe time jump, because what did they do last year? 84? Yeah, but 85 is when Goonies came out. Yeah. Well, 85 is like the bulk of, like, 85, 86 is when a lot of the good movies, yeah. a lot of good movies came out. So there's a ton of stuff they could reference. Yep. And bring in. You're gonna and have if, to, uh... if they do a Goonies reference or something, I will just I'll lose my shit. <laughs> what, what, what if the kids are there watching it and they're like, "Hey, doesn't that kid look like your old stepdad?" Brutal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just something yeah. like that. Bob. What was his name? Bob. Bob Newby. Bob Newby. Yeah. Bob, Bob something. Bob's yeah, superhero. Bob, I'm pretty sure it's Newby. Rest in yeah, rest in, in peace. Sam Wise Re- Rest in peace. One like one prayer. All right, and last but not least, uh, Child's Play TV series is being developed by the franchise creator. Please don't. I know. I, I'm totally cool with this. Like no. Ash vs. the Evil but then Dead. They can so many directed DVD ones that are just shit. So, but like he's not involved with them if I if I remember correctly. He's not. No. So it basically became it basically went the way of Hellraiser, where like they just started pumping out movies because it would make thirty bucks. <laughs> and then literally, <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> like literally like two people would buy the dvd and like that would be their budget back and so having this you know and like you got to look at the success as well of horror movies going to tv shows um scream is, oh. is scream is huge on mtv okay just to um, interrupt the, the, the creator of the series has directed in the past cut several movies even a new one. Oh, has he yeah I didn't think he was attached to any of them. Nope, he's done That's it. why they... Oh, okay. That kind of changes everything. <laughs> but regardless, like, look at Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Look at, um... 
you know, the the Scream MTV series. Like, there are movie horror movies that are moving to a long form storytelling perspective in television that are making it work. So, Child's Play, while it doesn't seem to fit the formula of like doing maybe 10 episodes of TV, like they could make it work and they could kind of stretch out the reveal of Chucky being the, the villain in the first season. TLDR, the movies are shit, this series will be shit, thanks. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just shit. It's just shit. The, the, the Scream series isn't all that great. You could put a bow around it again. if you want, it's still a log, all right? <laughs> It still smells like shit, and it looks like shit. It's shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm hit and miss on the Chucky movies. Like, they're funny because they're not meant to be. Yeah, yeah, nah, pass, hard, hard pass, hard, hard, hard pass. Cool. I think that's pretty much everything for news. There was a few other little bits of sort of speculative stuff and rumors which we didn't like. There's the, the talk about the uh, the original creator of the V TV series from the 80s uh, that, they, that they then redid in 2009 or whatever. He's he's wanting to come back and do a trilogy of movies, but he's still sniffing around for financing. So I mean that that could turn out to be nothing at this stage. And there's It'll a few other sort of little bits like that where it was just sort of really speculative. So we probably don't need to delve into too much of that. But anyway, so let's move quickly on to um, Altered Carbon. Yay, they cried. It's, it's all for you, Toby, because we haven't seen <laughs> shit all of it. Yeah, well, yeah. I, won't, I won't delve into spoilers. I mean, you guys caught, what, the first episode, at least? That's all I've seen, yeah. I, I've caught 60% of the first episode. Okay, not doing too well. <laughs> I, I, no, look, I, I liked it. Like, it, again, this is coming from, you know, not much of a first episode watch, but I, I did enjoy it. Um, there's so much exposition in that first episode that, like, I got home from work and then my girlfriend got home and then we're like, cool, let's have dinner, we'll put the first episode on, and I was sitting there, like, clutching my head because I'm like, they're giving you so much at the start yeah. that, like, could have, I, like, and I don't know the rest of the series and how it goes, but it feels like they could have given this to you over time yeah. rather than just being like, all right, cool, here's 40 minutes of exposition while all this other shit's going on at yep. the same time. Yeah, I just, I didn't, I didn't noticed. like that. I've noticed certain TV shows coming out of the US have been doing this lately, and they dump all this exposition on you on the first episode uh, in the hopes that you'll stick around to find out what it all means. And that's exactly what happens in this. They, yeah, yes. they explain it all, but you have to watch the whole show. It's one of those things, you know, people go, you know, you have to watch the first four episodes, or you have to watch the first season, and then the, every other season gets good. Right? It's, it's, it's a, a kind of hook. But I don't think it's a particularly good one, and I agree. I wish they would stop doing this shit, because I've seen it in a few series now. Uh, and it's it's annoying. The other thing they did was there's a shitload of tits and ass in the first two episodes. Like, gratuitous amounts. Like, worse than Game of Thrones. And half of it was unnecessary. Uh, and then it dulls it right back. There's some nudity now and again, but it's not anything like those first two episodes. And again, I felt that was just a hook to try and grab maybe the teen audience, the teen boy audience. Because um, just about yep. every female character of any note... Gets a baps that, out. Get, and the rest... Like, there's, there's, there's plenty of full frontal nudity across the board. Um, uh, and there's even a few willies, so... Um, yeah, you, you that's know, to get the teenage, the, the teenage female audience in. Well, and, and those that bat both ways and all the rest of it. But, um, yeah, look, that, it was a cheap hook. Um, and I didn't... Look, as others have said, Jesse has said previously on the podcast how, you know, there's this mentality that, that being naked and having a sex scene, it's trying to show vulnerability in a character and rah, rah, you know, it's, it, that's wank. Uh, and, and, and it's certainly not the case in this show anyway. It's, to me, it was just a, a hook with some bait on it to try and capture a particular audience. Having said all of that, uh, the storyline and this was, was, I mean, it's based on a, a novel, which is a series. Um, the story, overarching story was good. The script, uh, I felt, got campy in places, which was something I had been worried about since I watched the trailer. Uh, and interestingly, uh, without giving away too many spoilers, you know, you have the the uh, the lead actor, um, you know, old mate from Robocop. I've forgotten his name. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, Joel Kinnaman. Yeah, thank you. Uh, he's playing this lead character, but of course, that's not his original body. He has uh, he's originally sort of Japanese born, and he has a, a sleeve, as they're called in these these bodies. Uh, and there's a, a Oriental gentleman actor who plays his original body. And ironically, I felt the acting from uh, again you have to look it up for me. I missed his name, but the, the the Oriental actor, his performance I felt was better 
uh, largely, and if we do go into a season two, I'd probably rather have him as the lead. Um, not that uh, old mate did a bad Kinnaman. job, did a bad job, but it just it was it was. This is someone who's meant to be the same person in two different bodies, but there's... They feel like two completely different people. I totally got that from the start. Yeah, they just didn't match up. Well, whereas others kind of did a bit better. Um, it just... The thing is, what gets... What the problem is, it wouldn't just be... There's so much they needed to sink, but it probably would have cost too much money. I don't know. Because there's things like the way you walk. Sure, you've got a different body, different muscles, but there's certain things that would... Even if you'd had a limp previously... That psychologically, that that would have stayed with him. The way he talks, habits, ticks, um, you know, he keeps playing with his hair, whatever. Like none of that came across. The way he talked, and it just, yeah, it, it there was some similarities, but not enough. And I just felt that they really needed to mirror those two actors a lot better, um, and to make it more believable. And I'm sure in the book that probably comes across better. Um, for instance, you know, I felt that the original version of the character, the, the original sleeve, was far more compassionate. Yes, he was a soldier, and then, but he'd found love and all the rest of it. Sure, this is a man who's now had his heart broken and all the rest of it, but he's the the the, the Killerman or whatever version is just way more violent and aggressive and and stone cold, and it just they just felt radically different. And yeah, so look, it was. I, look, yes, if you push past the first two episodes, um, it, it gets more tolerable. The storyline and the acting and all that is is par for the course in terms of most sci-fi stuff that we've seen these days coming out of Hollywood. Um, what you're probably mainly watching for is the action and special effects. There's a, a episode later in the show, sort of episode 7 or something, that's all sort of flashback. That was actually a really good episode because it didn't have the the modern characters it was you know the the sort of stuff happening 250 years earlier that was a really enjoyable episode and that that cast was more i had more of a connection with that storyline and that cast than i did with the the current day um but if there is a season two it'll be um completely different probably a whole new cast it'll be a completely different location i mean uh, they, yeah. they could just do a doctor who on the whole thing same well, character, very easily. People. Yeah, very, very easily. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I would be surprised. Well, I'm not going to go into spoiler territory, but I would be surprised if the any of the the lead cast return in the second season, uh, if they stick to the books. I mean, they may yeah. deviate hugely. I don't know. Yeah, look, I gave it about. A, I'd give it about a six out of ten. It, it's you know, if you've got a week off work and you've run out of things to watch, throw it on. It's not that bad. Uh, it's not going to win any awards, uh, at least not for script and acting. But um, visually, it looked good. I said some of the action scenes, some of the fighting was pretty good. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's about enough of that for altered carbon. Just to kind of add on, <clears throat> I felt a very, and I'm assuming you're probably, you might feel a little bit differently, Toby. I got a very Blade Runner vibe from it. Yeah, like I think they were trying to cash in on that. Yeah, but it's, it's, I feel, it's purely I, aesthetic. It's, there's I, nothing it, that I there was nothing in the story that made me feel that it was like it's just there's some flying cars, cars, and there's some flashing billboards, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's what I was kind of getting at. Like it, it stylistically has that Blade Runner vibe of kind of that cyberpunk future. Like <clears throat> even when he's walking through the street at the about halfway through the show or through that first episode and they have like the holograms of the strippers and stuff like I just kind of imagined that would be something that you would see in a Blade Runner universe yeah I mean, uh, and, and, and that's kind of where I'm coming from it's like it felt too much of the same of another franchise definitely and I think I, I, mean, think, I, I think that's one of why I'm also kind of falling out a bit with it it's because it's like it's way too soon to Blade Runner for 2049 like they've only just come out with the second one of that and you're already going to kind of release something that feels like a rip off do you get yeah. what I mean? I mean, I haven't read the novel, so I don't know what's contained in that. I mean, whether the yep. cities look like that or not in the original material, you know, because look, in their defense, maybe they just they just drew from the book. Maybe that is in the book, in which case, you know, this the, the original author probably borrowed off Blade Runner that was, you know, from from years ago. If it's not, then sure. Yeah. Then the, the, the Netflix or whatever have gone, hey, let's cash in on this this Blade Runner craze and throw in all these visual effects. I don't know. Um, it's definitely there, but it's not gratuitous. Like it's it's enough that they could fill the trailer with it and make you go, "Oh, this looks like Blade Runner." But I mean, once you're actually watching the story, no, uh, it's not like that at all. 
yeah, stylistically, I think like it has the Blade Runner vibe to it, but that's literally where the similarities end when it comes to having. It's, it's got yeah, it's got the yeah. very traditional sort of Buffy sort of thing where you've got the main hero who's doing all the fighting, and then you've got the support team behind them. Uh, and as you're watching it, you're like, yep. I could see this going for 12 series with all these characters. You know what I mean? Like it was, yep. oh, you're the computer dude, and, and you're the you're the doctor dude, and you know it was it was very by the numbers. Um, so that's what I mean. That's why I gave it a six. Like it's nothing surprising or new or terribly exciting. It's it's just another sci-fi romp with some special effects. It's not bad, but it's just not particularly outstanding either. Yep. All right. So let's move over to. Um, something that you could prattle on about for 300,000 hours, no doubt. And that's the new Cloverfield movie, The Cloverfield Paradox, originally titled God Particle. <clears throat> well, let's Are start we... off with a spoiler free first for, for okay. those that haven't watched it. To give everyone kind of like a, a lead into the movie, and I feel it's pretty important, I read an article on Sunday, and we, we posted it up Sunday last week, kind of chronicling the ARG. Uh, which, funnily enough, was the day before release, so I think it was perfect timing that I kind of got that inspiration to write that and put that out. In regards to the movie, the ARG is critical. Like, I think that's kind of where the movie is falling over with casual fans. It's that unless you know the ARG and the specific things within the ARG, you're going to get lost real fucking quick in that movie. Personally... I, I, haven't, I haven't followed the ARG, and I had no trouble following the movie. Well, there's just certain... Because this is meant to be the connective tissue between, well, quote unquote, the connective tissue between this and the original Cloverfield movie, which it was, to, for the most part, there were some pretty big 10 Cloverfield Lane connections that I picked up on, which we'll get into in spoilers. But yeah, like I just, I feel that the majority of people who haven't followed the ARG have kind of, follow, kind of followed the original movies. A lot of people didn't like it, and I can see why. Yeah, but, but I most people won't have followed the ARG, to be honest. Yeah, but like in saying that, you know, I followed the ARG for 10 years. You know, I've loved, I love these movies. I think Cloverfield is an excellent film. 10 Cloverfield Lane is better. I wouldn't put this in the tier of those two movies, but by no stretch of the imagination, within this universe, was it a bad movie? If anything, it served as a deus ex machina, essentially, to create a whole universe. And I feel that's exactly what it needed to do. And moving forward, like this is going to be this is the launching point for those movies well it's gonna yeah it, it, it explains why essentially yes it explains why cloverfield happens it explains why 10 cloverfield lane happens it's going to explain why the new film set in world war ii happens and it's going to explain all the, all the rest of it um yep my problem with the film it's not a problem so much was 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 i had two points one uh the first i liked i loved and i laughed my ass off at the humor from chris o'dowd as Monday, however, I felt it had no place in the movie. It just it took the you'd have these tense moments where you're on the edge of your seat and you're like, "Holy shit, what the hell's going on?" And then you're like, "Ha ha ha!" It just it just broke the immersion for me. As I said, the humor was great. I just don't feel it belonged in this film. The humor was there to be there and nothing more. Like it didn't drive anything. Well, I feel I probably I'm thinking Chris O'Dowd probably pushed for it in some regards. Uh, no, no, the original script. See, I've read the original script. Mundy was a very funny character. Yeah, okay. he was the he was the comedic relief. Yeah, I just don't think it needed to be there. In my no, it, seeing the finished product, <laughs> hell no. Like it, it was too much. I agree. Yeah. The other thing is, look, people are sort of. Well, I've seen some some conversation about why this went straight to Netflix. This was as far when I watched it. As far as I'm concerned, this was always a direct to to DVD, direct to TV film. Uh, it didn't have a huge budget from what I can see. And I think if you had paid your 10 to $15 to see this at a cinema, you probably would have been disappointed. The way it was marketed was very clever. There was a lot of hype built. Then everyone just immediately rushed off and watched it on Netflix. So the viewer ratings for this thing went up and up and up. And that was how they, that was probably the way, the best way to release this film. I absolutely agree with the way they did it. Abrams did a good job there. Because I think if this had hit the cinema, uh, it would have killed the entire series. Can, can I just say something? Absolutely. Four days before this movie came out, I said to Lucas, I'm like, wouldn't it be awesome if they aired a trailer during the Super Bowl and it says, available on Netflix after the Super Bowl? He totally fucking did. Four days before <laughs> like, the movie came out. Four before... days before the thing came out, I said that to Lucas. Yeah, and then as well, like when the, um, so that morning, was that morning or the night before? The, um, there the was morning. The, all, well, all the articles saying, 
uh, heavy rumors Cloverfield to release after Super Bowl, and I'm like, get fucked. Like, this would be <laughs> this would be this would be cool, but like the odds on that happening, I think, are very slim. And then the more I thought about it, the more I was like, well, Cloverfield didn't release with uh, you know any of its marketing with the trailer until like the last trailer a month before the movie came out. Ten Cloverfield Lane dropped a trailer a month before the movie came out. How fucking awesome would it be from a marketing standpoint if they're like, all right, cool. You know, we're going to air this trailer in the second in the second quarter of the Super Bowl. Uh, check Netflix in like three and a half hours and you can watch it. Like, that is some smart shit. It got yeah. people talking. I think it was the third highest social media mention during the Super Bowl, only behind Infinity War and Han Solo. Which, if you think about that, they paid $5 million for a 30-second clip. That was their entire marketing. And it got the third highest social media mention. Yeah. Now, like, in terms of critics, it's sitting at about 36 on Metascore. Uh, and it's a 5.8 out of 10 on IMDb currently. So it's, you know, it's averaging sort of just above average. Yeah. I, 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 there's a, <clears throat> excuse me. I can see why people would dislike it. There is a lot of that movie you have to know going in um which i'll get into spoilers later ethan yeah, and i <clears throat> again ethan... like it, it had to go straight to dvd or netflix and again that was the smart play it's a movie in 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 a certain way you had to have because it needed they need to set up what's coming next you know and the way abrams is talking about what, what's the world war ii one called the, the next overlord World. The way he's talking about that, like, that's going to be... That's the big budget, special effects, money, money, money fiasco. And you had to have this film to sort of explain that and lead into that. So the fact that this is now available on Netflix, so that when Overlord drops later this year, you can just go back and watch this at any stage and go, cool, I'm ready. Um, it's good. And, I, I, tr I look at it more as a sort of almost necessary piece of source material rather than, you know an entertaining film does that make sense at all like you know what i mean it's sort of like it's kind of like watch this one hour documentary before you go and watch these three films yeah you know and what also, i mean also the morning of the super bowl they pretty much netflix everywhere added the original clover field onto it yeah, as well quite, <laughs> yeah, yeah they, which 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 we yeah. all watched i think while we were waiting for various people to come <laughs> home yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, well, yeah, Mrs. gets home in 90 minutes, but Cloverfield goes for 85. Exactly. Let's yeah, just, I, I kind of did the same thing. Yep, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this this was an important movie in the franchise because it needed to set up past events. It needed to show you why those events occurred, and then it also set up future events, which uh, I will get very deep. I will get balls deep into it when we get into spoilers <laughs> because. All right. Well, um, okay. Let's give give me out of 10. What would you give this? <laughs> I'm gonna give two scores. I'm gonna give. If I was not a Cloverfield fan, as as hardcore as I am, I'd probably give it a five. But because of how much I followed everything leading into this movie, I'd give it an eight and a half, purely for the payoff of the ARG. Okay, I'll Ethan. give it a bit an eight, eight, eight and a half. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good because I'm I'm the outside dog here. I'm not the big uh, Cloverfield fan. So yeah, I I agree with Lucas. I'd probably give it a five or a six. Probably. Probably, probably five out of ten to be honest. This is like uh, reverse Blade Runner for Toby. This is this yeah. is like this this is our Blade Runner, Lucas. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, and that's, and that's cool. Yeah, and that's cool. Horses for courses, right? Um, <laughs> but yeah, like it wasn't it wasn't a particularly bad film. Will I go back and watch it again? Probably not. Maybe before I go and watch the next film, which I'm more keen for for Overlord to be honest. I I didn't think it was a. I can understand, and the thing is. If you if you you could see what God Particle was going to be before the Cloverfield influence, uh, yes. And without the Cloverfield yes. influence, this was going to be a really fucking boring movie. I totally agree. I, I do what? feel that due to the largely negative reception of Cloverfield Paradox, that that may impact Overlaw when that finally gets changed to a Cloverfield title. I don't think it will. You don't I, think I, it will? I, nah, I don't think it will. Everyone who like Dude, everyone, it's Nazis and monsters. It's gonna fucking make a trillion. <laughs> um, uh, we'll get it. Okay, so I'm gonna get into that a bit later. Um, because they hinted at the villain for Overlord in Cloverfield Paradox, and I know Ethan picked it up. Uh, because yep. before the words came out of my mouth, he t he exactly said what it was, and I was like, "Dude, fucking yes." We'll end uh spoiler-free discussion there. 
if you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix now. Go and do yourself a favor, watch it. Uh, it it's not a particularly long film, so it shouldn't take up much of your time. Uh, and then when you're done, you can come back and continue listening to this podcast because we're going to delve into some spoilers now and like when you take the dog to the park and you just clip the leash off the collar and then the dog goes boom and it's thousand jillion miles an hour this is lucas and i'm taking the leash off him now <laughs> that's my fucking arm <laughs> holy shit i busted up laugh so i read that line in the script and i'm like yeah i can kind of imagine chris o'dowd saying that and then when he said it i fucking like cried just because of his like the way he like it, it sounded so much like an it crowd lo- I, uh, it crowd line yeah in the way I'm he delivered that line I'm happy I, mean, I was waiting for him to, have to, to say have you turned it off and on again when they couldn't get the the the, um, <laughs> the, the machine accelerator to work yeah i'm like Dude, was- <laughs> i was waiting for him to go have you tried turning it off and on again <laughs> yeah yeah if this hadn't have been a cloverfield movie i 100 percent agree this movie would have got fucking trashed yeah the saving grace was that it has the Cloverfield name attached to it, if yeah. anything. Yeah. Now, the uh, I need to pull up. I I, I I need to pull up an email that I sent off to someone. Uh, so I follow another podcast. Uh, Ethan knows about these guys, Dynamic Banter. Yeah. Um, who it's uh, Steve Zaragoza and Mike Falzone from SourceFed. Um, they're hardcore Cloverfield fans, and I sent them this email. I'll have to go find it and, and nail off a couple of things. But man the fucking connections between these three movies is is nuts the biggest one is possibly the 10 cloverfield lane connections the biggest one of course is when emmett is sitting in the bunker and they're talking about right before they go into the bunker he talks about the red flash from the sky something i've theorized for months and months and months the red flash was them turning on the particle accelerator what i didn't realize is that the particle accelerator was being turned on in another dimension so yep. when when they said at the start of the movie uh when donald logue who is um mark stambler who we'll get into him a bit later mentions that turning on this particle accelerator will stretch across all times in sp- all um all dimensions in space and time now wasn't that a pickup shot like that was done later for sure oh for boy sure. it was oh, yeah sorry. it's like we need a whole bunch of exposition to explain what the fuck's about to happen so so the main the main bits that weren't in the script originally were literally all the earth stuff and all the stuff with stambler yeah um which is brother everything too. E- everything else and sorry well it's his brother too uh the guy who's, who's on the t- the guy on the tv telling you who it's gonna the, what's gonna happen if the particle oh yeah that's that yeah that's that's, that's stambler that's- yeah, it's his, the, his brother is um, Ten Cloverfield Lane in the bunker. Yeah, I was I was going to get into that. So I know, that, I just I, but I stole your thunder. <laughs> you did stole you did stole my thunder. And then the chick that was on the TV as well was the one trying to get into the bunker. Yeah, huh? The caster. Yeah, yeah the TV caster. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she all was. your thunder stolen. All your thunder oh, stolen. No, it's all good. I just stole my thunder back, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but like the, the main, like I was going to say, the main Ten Cloverfield Lane references was the red sky was also Howard Stambler's brother was the one who was putting the book out in the alternate dimension that Cloverfield Paradox was taking place in and the newscaster was actually you know was a fairly key plot character in 10 Cloverfield Lane because she got over she was able to get over the idea that she that um uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead's character should definitely not go outside like uh, watching it as well like I wasn't sure because we knew beforehand this wasn't a Cloverfield movie until after the fact but there's so many Cloverfield references in the original or like ties to Cloverfield and the Cloverfield universe in the original script like the uh, Ethan no- Ethan mentioned it I'll, I'm probably stealing a whole bunch of his thunder but he, he told me that he noticed the Tagrawado logo oh, on, yeah. the, on the ship yeah. on the outside of the ship but it could have um, just been put on during CGI at the end of the movie, like, at any point as well. Yeah, which it totally, totally could have been. Don't forget the slusho. The slusho yeah, was added in for reshoots. The, yeah, yeah, the slusho was added in the reshoots. I have a feeling that the spaceship itself was created by Bold Futura, who Bold Futura is one of the fictitious subsidiaries of Tagarawado. Could be, yeah. The stuff that Chris O'Dowd was using to seal up the wall. Yeah, it was uh, like a, he, he sprays it on and he electrically charges it and it, it sort of seals yeah yeah i have a feeling that was made they have a um they have a scientific division i can't remember what it's called but i have a feeling that, that was made by them like or there were all these kind of like half references of like all right cool so this company so all these companies of tagrawado have sent t- sorry tagrawado has sent this satellite up 
with tech from all these different parts of their companies and the parts of their subsidiaries to utilize it to then send it up into space to then now, apparently to char- Simon, charge Simon Shepard. Pegg has cameoed in in all of these films it, as it's well, a in some way. yeah like in this it one is. he's on the, he's a voice of the radio apparently but yeah. apparently I'd, I'd read earlier that he he's sort of he he crops up in all of them somewhere uncredited He's yeah, good so, friends with JJ. Same yeah. with Greg Grunberg. Greg, Greg, Greg Grunberg, which is why he got put in Star uh, Wars and Star Trek and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say as well, yeah, Greg Grunberg is also in all three of them. Who is uh, Matt, pa- to, Matt, uh, Matt, Matt Parkman from Lost. Yeah, and as I said to Lucas, you'll always, in every JJ Abrams movie you'll see, there will always be Calvin somewhere. And Calvin's a reference to his granddad who got JJ Abrams into liking films. And so everything JJ Abrams does, there's a Calvin in it somewhere. <laughs> Whether it's written, a character name, a location name, Calvin's there. Yeah, there's there's three things you'll always see. Slusho, Calvin, and Greg Grunberg. Yep, pretty much. With uh, with Howard Stambler, not Howard, Howard's the brother. So Howard Stambler is John Goodman's character from 10 Cloverfield Mark Lane. Mark Stambler is his brother, which is Daniel, Dan, um, Donald Logue, who was uh, the one on the TV screen talking to the newscaster, which the newscaster, f- for those that give a shit, her name is Leslie. When they're talking about what oh, here you go. this, here you go, Lucas. This is what you're after. The sealant used to repair the Helios is paraffin wax, a product invented by Tagruato. That's it. Paraf- yeah, paraffin wax. There you go. Yeah, but but instead of paraffin, it's paraffin. Yeah. Yeah, ha, yeah. Ha 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 ha. Ah, uh, cool. So yeah, basically, like, kind of having some time to think about this movie and and how it was all set up. There's like four dimensions in this universe now. And there, there's a running theory, um, Ethan can probably add a little bit more to this than I can, because I think he knows a bit more about it than I do. There was a theory going around on Reddit a few years ago called the Alternate, alternate Dimensions Theory, which was that each movie was taking place in an alternate dimension. And these dimensions were created by Tagruado to test certain things, and then basically that world would go to shit, they would just open a new dimension and just start again. Right. To be known, but is, I mean, uh, is it... Do we know if Ten Cloverfield Lane is in fact a separate dimension? I mean, yes. it, could, it is. I mean, it could yeah. be in the same dimension as no. this film. No. So the, the, the I guess the key plot point you can take away from this is that Donald Logue's character uh, Mark specifically states turning the Shepard particle accelerator on will alter space and time in different locations. So when they turn the Shepard particle on, that's when Clover goes to the Cloverfield universe because that's all the dimensions essentially becoming one. All the other dimensions don't realize it's happening but the people that turned it on get sucked into all the dimensions at once. So Clover ends up on the ten, on, on the Cloverfield universe meanwhile when they turned it on that's the red sky that Emmett noticed in the, in the sky right before they went into the bunker um, which then brought through the aliens for 10 Cloverfield Lane and basically what it did is it merged all of these dimensions into one so that you know there there's a dimension where there's a there, there's a dimension where there's aliens on earth there's a dimension where there's cloverfield monsters on earth there's a dimension where we don't have any power there's a dimension um that you know takes place in like the 2016 whatever was happening in that universe um you know all of these dimensions essentially are coming into one and then when they turn the um shepherd back on at the end they split the universes again so they've essentially the, the the tagline of the movie is the future unleashed everything so this movie i think takes place in around 2020 2028 uh, i think now nah, 2020 because they launched the satellite in 2018 and they've been in space for two years that's how i took it all right the so w- the future basically they've gone they've activated that uh-huh. and, and, and this have, movie takes place in 2028 prior films took place blah blah blah, blah. fuck you it's 2028 that's right you dick where does it say that? It's just it, IMDB, which is never wrong. Oh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, like, the, the future has fucked every dimension at once with that particle accelerator. And that's what I kind of mean where this movie is the deus ex machina of the universe. This is the, this is the starting point for all the other stories. Yeah, yeah. Now, that's interesting because the events took place... The events in the original Cloverfield movie take place in 20, uh, 2008 events of the second film take place in 2016 the events of the third film take place apparently according to imdb that is never wrong in 2020 and then the fourth movie is going to be taking place in 1944 yeah so we now know for a fact that this event 
in all these different universes and all these different dimensions is, is triggering off at certain points in time. Now, what makes this even fucking more awesome is that all we know about Overlord is that it's set the day before D the D-Day invasion in France. And a whole bunch of American paratroopers go down to stop a supernatural entity, or they run into a supernatural entity in a small village. And Mark Stambler says in the movie at one point, turning on this particle accelerator is the worst thing that could ever happen because you'll unleash monsters, beasts from the sea, and demons. And we've seen beasts from the sea, and we've seen monsters, but we've not seen demons. So I think that they're going to be doing Nazi demons. Yay! In the next movie. It's not going to be like Nazi zombies as everyone is theorizing. I think they're going to like swerve us somehow and bring in demons that are being harnessed by Nazis. And that this paratripping unit is going to be facing fucking demons. Innocent Tagorado is founded one year after <laughs> no, the it was movie set. No, nah, it's founded in 44. Oh, 44, sorry, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's founded the year before the war ended. Cool. <clears throat> Which is then, funnily enough, when this movie's set. So I feel like this is going to be the start of Tagrawado, and we're going to see, essentially, their evil origins before they kind of become this public face of, you know, hey, look, we make fun energy drinks that, you know, make you go fucking insane. Uh, we're going to make satellites that send into space that track down aliens and all this other stuff, so... Um, I feel like the Overlord ARG is going to be insane. Yep. Well, but. in a way, this movie's kind of, even though it's set in the future and it's the most recent, it's almost like a prequel in some regards, isn't it? I feel this is like... Like, if you had never watched any of them... You, you could watch could. this first. You could watch this first, exactly. So that's the other except, thing. Like, you know, if you've except never, maybe yeah. get lost with the last 10 seconds of the movie and being like, what the fuck is that? And then you go watch Cloverfield. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's Big Bummer. What? The, the monster at the end. That's Big Mama. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, 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 that's not Clover. So when I was kind of talking about that Ultimate Dimensions thing and that the universes have split, J.J. Abrams said very early on that Clover in the original movie was just it's a baby. Nature. Yeah. Yeah, like this is a baby Clover. And the it has separation anxiety is what he said. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, the fact that this one stuck its head out of the clouds and also is set in 2020 makes me think that, yeah. 2028, for fuck's sake. 2020. <laughs> That I, this is that this is Mama looking for baby. Well, yes, and she's just going to step on whole cities at a time. Yeah, yeah but fuck also that I will add this: someone worked out where in the pod that they're in at the end, coming back to Earth, someone worked out that the part of Earth it shows the pod heading towards is actually Germany, not America. Interesting, interesting, because that's exactly where the next movie's going to be. Yep. Yeah, but why would it send it to? Why would it aim to Germany? Well, you'll, just have to, have to, you'll have to ARG and you'll have to Reddit and you'll have to, you know, beg Abrams for more clues and figure it nah, out. Nah, that's just that just sounds like lazy CGI. If I'm being honest, <laughs> <laughs> it could be. To be honest, it could be. But come on, you played the ARG. There's no mistakes. Everything's intentional. If nothing mm. else, it's a nod to say, guess what, kiddies, we're going to Germany. Pack up your swim trunks, we're going for a swim. <laughs> yeah, inland Germany. There's no fucking coastal area at all. <laughs> it's going to detour via Paris. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, look, uh, obviously, if you haven't read Lucas's article and you want to delve into the ARG, there's an awful lot there. And Lucas will, of course, encourage you to do that. Uh, and Absolutely. I there's going to be a bunch more now that we've had this film and we're going into the, oh, the fourth one. Oh. Oh, okay, here's something. Here's something. Now, this might tie to something Lucas sent me as well, just to quickly do this. Someone, J.J. Abrams did an interview, and this, he said is, there are two no one has found, two Easter eggs, and one that is something weird we're doing with Netflix that's yet to be found out. That could be that tambourine thing you sent me, Lucas. What the fuck? I don't know. He just said it's something weird they're doing with Netflix. That's all he said. So it could be that tambourine thing. What the fuck? Is this okay? Is, it, in. is this the is this the interview that he did this morning? Like, this is a it's only been the UK one. Uh, yeah, it's only been done in the past, like been released in the past few hours. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, because he also said something about he got asked about um, Overlord, and he said it's fucking crazy. Yeah. So, like that was his legit word for word quote. The movie's fucking crazy. Yeah, shit. So for those that uh, those that don't know, uh, about a week ago, uh, Netflix uploaded a trailer to their YouTube account of CGI tambourines playing with no context. It was just a black screen with tambourines in shadows shaking, and then they all dropped to the ground and it just said tambourine. 
that's it. Okay, then. We'll, we'll, we'll it, include that in the links. It is It is bizarre. And he's taking credit for it, is he? Or is well, potentially we, taking we, credit? We well, he's not, he's not taking credit. Yeah, we don't know if that's what it is, but he's saying that there's two Easter eggs that no one's found yet. And then one that, and the one is that something we're doing with Netflix that's yet to be found out. Uh, is it yeah. yet to be found out because they haven't announced it, or is it yet to be found out because no one's figured it out yet? I think it's because no one's figured it out. Well, I know what you're doing for the rest of your weekend. <laughs> oh, God fucking damn it. That's <laughs> right. Scaring the internet, I go. Yeah. <laughs> Watching this film frame by frame. Oh, my God. There was so, and there was so much cool shit in this movie, too. Someone made the joke yeah. about... Um, someone made the joke about Chekhov's gun being made by a Russian. Yeah. The... What else was there? There was there's just so many, like, cool bits to this movie. He also said... The um, fucking... Oh, and the fucking worms. Someone asked about yeah, the AIG... Yeah. And he said, there are still things that are coming. For a very niche group of people, I love them. And their involvement has been so much fun. So he's obviously yeah. talking about the ARG people. And yeah. The so JJ actually loves the ARG. So when they did the ARG on the first movie, he, he's into that weird sort of shit. So he got behind it and he loved the idea of it and just kind of let the marketing people do what they needed to do. And, you know, they, they did really well with Cloverfield. They did really well with 10 Cloverfield Lane and dropping all the information they needed to as the pretext to that movie because like <clears throat> if you go in like if you read my article and then stop at the cloverfield where, where where i change from cloverfield to 10 cloverfield lane so if you read all the cloverfield arg stuff and then go into 10 clover uh, into cloverfield and watch that movie you'll kind of get a different movie which i think is really cool uh and then the same thing again with 10 cloverfield lane with all the stambler you know, the fact that he's trying to save his daughter and like, obviously we, for those that have seen 10 Cloverfield Lane, we know, uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane, we know what happened to Megan, but we don't know why he can't get in touch with her. Uh, and that was a big driving force of the 10 Cloverfield Lane thing. They also did the, um, the, the GPS drop with the, uh, USB sticks, which, you know, that was fucking awesome. You know, if they're, if they're only going to get crazier with the ARG, like I'm all for it. Like I'm sitting there, you know, clasping my hands waiting for something to come up cool all right well i think that's pretty much everything we've got for for we could go on for more hours i'm sure but that well, probably could... wraps everything up for cloverfield paradox i could talk cloverfield for days you could but um that's a pretty chunky episode i, I think we covered a lot which is really good i'm, I'm pleased with that we need we to didn't even up... get into the deadpool stuff no we didn't did we ah oh, man well. next time next time we'll have to do that again just because this episode was so beastly we're gonna have to do it next time but yeah, man. Some really cool stuff. All right. Well, we need to sing our way out. We did Boombox last last fortnight. I was thinking maybe Operatic. No? You lead the way. Ha, 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 ha.